Paul, it's a delight to interview you today. Uh, you are a senior fellow of the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that involves, please? Yes. Well, uh, the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute is an organization founded in 2015 by a gentleman named Rob Schenck. Uh, Rob is an evangelical minister here in the United States, and he has a cohort of roughly 19 senior fellows with different specializations. Mine happens to be race in America and also racism in the global South. So I typically travel all the globe looking for opportunities to mediate conflicts and differences across different racial and ethnic groups and bring that knowledge and understanding back to our cohort of senior fellows so we can develop ideas for programming that might uh, challenge those narratives that we find so problematic here at home as well as around the world. And how did you become acquainted with the Institute? Very interesting question. So it's a kind of a meandering story. I was having a conversation one day with one of my father's younger sisters, and she recalled um, listening to Rob Schenck some years ago and said, Paul, I really think uh, you need to meet Rob Schenck. I was of the understanding that she knew him well since she'd worked in certain capacities within the Christian church out in Colorado. It turns out she actually never met him. I found his phone number. I gave him a, a, um, a phone call. And as we began to talk about my work and my interest in what he was all about, uh, he decided that I could bring something to the organization that he needed. And he invited me to become one of his senior fellows. So tell us a little bit more about the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute. Um, what is its philosophy or mission, its values? The goal is obviously to advance the work of the ministry, the legacy of an outstanding uh, theologian, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, to help others become acquainted with his life, similar to his good friend Eberhard Beth, uh, Beth Gay did uh, as he wrote several books uh, based upon the letters uh, and the correspondence and the friendship that they enjoyed during his 39 years of life. Um, what we aim to do as an organization is not only to proliferate the work of Bonhoeffer, but to invite others to understand how to think and reason through many of the social and political economic dynamics that we experience in the world today. One of them happens to be uh, the state of Christianity in the world, and how is it that we promote and, and inspire the ministry of Christ, but not necessarily do so from a religious perspective, but understanding how the world has shifted and continues to shift from one generation to the next. I happen to be an engineer, and so looking through the lens as, uh, as an engineer, as a scientist, as well as, as a theologian and minister, uh, it, it's very clear to me that we need to learn how to bring um, many of the conversations that we have in separate dialogues into a common uh, conversation. And so this is one of the things that we do within the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute. I remember vividly reading his cost of discipleship early on in my ministry and my, my daughter's reading it at the moment. I'm reading his letters at the moment. Um, so how significant in your mind is the operation of the Spirit of God to the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute? If I draw from the story uh, that I shared with you as to how I was even introduced to Rob Schenck, uh, I would say it's absolutely critical. Um, we don't uh, have a secular worldview. Uh, we do have a Christian worldview that is shaped by scripture and defined uh, by the life of Christ as we understand him and as we experience him through the life of the spirit of God. Uh, we're not a secular organization, even though we may embrace and and have conversation and dialogue and partner with secular organizations. We try to be very specific and very targeted in the things that we do. 
Uh, some of the, those things might involve gun, uh, gun legislation. Some of those things may involve uh, promoting the right to life or health care or any of, of the issues that are commonly spoken about uh, in the political arena. But we do so from the vantage point of what it means to inspire uh, each other to mm -hmm. embrace the life of Christ. And not only that, but as Dietrich Bonhoeffer would even say, uh, to be there and witness to each other for the sake of one another, mm -hmm. and not just religiously, but from an anthropological or human perspective. So how would you compare the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute to organizations that embrace uh, its religious or social justice emphasis? Well, um, if we go to the root of why we exist, uh, many organizations are looking at contemporary issues and that's fine. I think we certainly must do that. Uh, we need to read the Bible um, and also we need to follow what is happening uh, in the social <laughs> order. I think what makes the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute very special is the life that he lived, the extraordinary contributions uh, that he makes and the relevance of his works. Um, it, it is amazing to all of us to see uh, how many people are learning about Dietrich Bonhoeffer and so it is a joy to share, uh, to participate in those conversations. And um, and I would say, um, uh, um, even Stephen, to elevate uh, those dialogues to new levels, because this is the kind of thing that, uh, that Dietrich Bonhoeffer was known to do uh, in the Confessing Church with many of his uh, students whom he taught, uh, but also his contemporaries, many of whom were older than he, but he seemed to have something that drove and inspired him to do things that, that even many of them would admire. Ben Bonhoeffer spent uh, those final two years of his life imprisoned in a German concentration camps, and that's where he wrote uh, his letters and papers from prison. They were written I think between April 43 and April 45. Um, how do these documents uh, influence you and others within the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute? I'm greatly inspired by them. I must say that as I read and reread many of his poems, uh, what, what comes to mind in particular is Stations on the Road to Freedom. Uh, written just after the assassination plot on Hitler, which he was involved in, failed. Um, and yet he had the, uh, the courage and the character, the strength behind bars, realizing that in all likelihood, his engagement and involvement in that plot uh, would likely be discovered. Uh, and so as I think about those letters, um, um, one, one has to say uh, that Dietrich Bonhoeffer never gave up. Um, he, he retained his sensitivities and compassions for all people, even those with whom he had sharp and fierce uh, disagreement. And, and yet he prevailed. He had a triumphalist attitude. Uh, he never yielded. Uh, in the face of adversity. Um, he never caved in to the pressure to turn his back on those for whom he had fought so valiantly. Uh, and as a theologian, uh, you see the excruciating uh, distortions of his life by those around him, and yet he managed to surmount even those, uh, those levels of opposition and challenge. Um, a fantastic warrior for truth he was. Mm -hmm. The uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute is hosting a colloquium here in the UK, in Oxford, uh, in March, and you're going to be one of the participants. Uh, what are the main topics of the colloquium and what will your role be in it? Well, my role will specifically be defined as we get closer to the event, but we will be focusing specifically on racialized Christian nationalism. 
Uh, that is our theme, that is our topic of the day, and many of us will come prepared to speak to the topic from different vantage points. I will seek to address not only racism here in the United States, but how race plays a significant role and religion um, in the nationalism that we see taking place in Ukraine. I will also try to deal with the psychology of Christian nationalism. Uh, so these are some of the themes that we're going to hopefully have a very fruitful and engaging discussion about. Do you see a, a, a link to the same concept of religious nationalism in Israel-Palestine? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I do. Um, and unfortunately, um, I think many struggle, and sometimes in the past I've struggled to understand that linkage. Uh, several years ago, I'm part of a group here in the United States named Voices for Justice in Palestine. And what we've tried to do here in that group is to link uh, the liberation struggles of, of Native Americans, um, of Palestinians, and of African Americans. And now we see how the struggle for freedom and liberation is not tied to any one country but it is a global struggle and we have to reconcile ourselves to that reality. And so this is one of the things that we're going to talk about. This is part of my, uh, my quest as a minister and as a scholar to make sure uh, that these linkages are not distorted, uh, but, at, but framed in such a way that we can appreciate why, um, these tensions that prevail between Isra Israelis and Palestinians cannot be ignored, uh, cannot be scuttlebutted and left aside as if it does not matter. If Ukraine matters, then Israel-Palestine matters. And if those issues matter, then relevant issues to the global South also matter. So there is this web of connectivity that we're trying to pull tightly together so we can appreciate the totality of it and ignore none of it. Hmm. And what, last question, Paul, what do you hope will be the lasting impact of the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute upon present or future generations of scholars, thinkers, and leaders? My hope and prayer is that we will leave a record of achievement, not only in the works that we publish and in our writings. Uh, I have four children. And so everything that I aspire to do uh, is in some way connected to what I believe their future should look like. Uh, and so it's not enough for me to be a good parent or a good father. Uh, I find that it's necessary to inspire them to do the things that Dietrich Bonhoeffer did, to have that type of courage. Um, and perhaps none of us will ever be what he was, uh, but what we can do is uh, live a life of commitment uh, and to choose the path uh, that God has destined or predestined for us. And I think if we do that, then the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute uh, will be one of those organizations amongst many that can have a lasting impact and influence upon future generations. Thank you. And there's one more question I forgot to ask, and that is if folk want to find out more about the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute, where will they find uh, information on the internet? Information about the mission, the values, the purpose, the senior fellows, the founder, all of that, even how to give and contribute to our work may be found at tdbi.org, the Dietrich Bonhoeffer Institute.org. If you simply Google the words, tdbi.org is sure to come up in your web browser. Well, thank you so much for giving your time for this interview. It's very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.